This live fire exercise by South Korean forces, a direct military response to the North's largest nuclear test. Army and Air Forces simulating an attack on North Korea's nuclear test site. Even as North Korean state media issued new threats to the U.S., including Guam, one editorial saying, every time the U.S. goes crazy talking about sanctions and war, our will of vengeance will become 100,000 times stronger. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley very much in the hardline mode back at Kim. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. Rising tensions pushing Defense Secretary James Mattis to exactly where he never wants to be, center stage at the White House. Any threat to the United States or its territories, including Guam, uh, or our allies will be met with a massive military response, a response both effective and overwhelming. But are there credible military options without thousands of casualties? What I think Secretary Mattis was doing was simply trying to convince the North that we have this option and they cannot be certain we would never use it under certain circumstances. It may be the most critical decision ever for Donald Trump. How much of a price we are willing to pay, how much we are willing to bleed uh, to accomplish our objectives, this is a decision uh, not for military members. This is a decision for elected uh, political leaders to make. And they always have to weigh uh, the cost versus the benefit. Short of U.S. attack, the Pentagon could send an aircraft carrier offshore. The Ronald Reagan is nearby. More bombers could be sent. South Korea and Japan both upping their missile defenses and cooperation with the U.S. But there is no indication Kim Jong-un is listening. We predict that North Korea could fire an intercontinental ballistic missile to show that they have obtained the means of delivering a nuclear bomb to the United States.